Hello and welcome to the 2021 BAFTA Young Game Designers Awards. I'm Ellis Lee Woods and tonight I'll be revealing the winners of BAFTA's annual search for the most exciting young game design talent in the UK. As ever, we have had hundreds of incredible entries this year, which only seems fitting in a time when games have felt more important than ever. This year's games were full of breathtaking worlds and bold themes, proving, if proof were needed, that games really are the ultimate form of storytelling, and that our entrants definitely have stories to tell. It's hard to believe it's the 11th year of the competition. Some of the earliest YGD winners and nominees are now actually working in the games industry. In fact, our first ever YGD winner, Dan Pearce, has gone on to bag a BAFTA Games Award nomination for his work. Plus, some of the games designed for YGD have even been published, like Emily Mitchell's Fractured Minds, which won an MCV Developer Award and even more impressively, has a 9 out of 10 rating on Steam. It just goes to show that Young Game Designers competition really is a springboard for new talent. This can genuinely be your first step into the games industry. And from there, BAFTA has so much to offer. From masterclasses with industry experts to game design scholarships, BAFTA has a brilliant year-round lineup of games event and talent schemes, no matter which stage you're at. Of course, we couldn't do it without our brilliant partners. Creative Assembly, Criterion Games, King, PlayStation, Tencent Games, Ubisoft, Warner Brothers Games, and Wizards of the Coast. And our partners are also providing a very exciting selection of goodies for all our nominees and winners. Now, once again this year, we're holding the ceremony virtually, but it does mean that you can sneak in a quick Switch game while you're waiting, so there are some upsides. Although, as ever, we've got plenty of special guests on the way, so, you know, pick something you can pause. Now, to start things off, let's hear from some of our nominees and BAFTA Young presenters about what got them through lockdown and what games they've been playing. During lockdown, people have been starved of social interactions. We suddenly lost micro-connections with other human beings, like bumping into them in the supermarket or saying hello to a friend in the park. It meant that I couldn't do the things that I used to love to do, so I was going to meet my friends. I found homeschooling difficult at times, and gaming really helped me to relax and unwind. Video games have kept millions of people connected through quarantine, and I'm no exception. I found that I definitely did play more games during lockdown than I would have normally. Small talk on Zoom wasn't really my kind of thing, but playing games with friends was exactly what I needed. I really love gaming. And I think lockdown has changed my gaming habits. I have realised that I've been playing online with friends more and I've been playing less single player games over the lockdown. I think games have really helped me socialise with my friends in a time where we're not allowed to meet with each other in real life. Video games such as CS and Minecraft helped me just stay occupied, stay doing something like just sleeping the entire day. Online games like Minecraft and Among Us have helped me keep in touch with my friends. Roblox, Minecraft. The game I have enjoyed the most this lockdown is Brawl Stars. It has kept me and my friends connected through its challenges. So recently I discovered Bed Wars on Minecraft. It's a fun mini game uh, where you can play with your friends. Well, I've been playing Death Stranding and just the fact that you can see what other people have done in the world, it just really makes you feel connected to other people and that's really nice. When building wealth, it was almost as though there wasn't a global pandemic going on. So I definitely think that Roblox helped me to strengthen my connections with some of my friends and I found that I was playing Roblox with people that I normally wouldn't have spoken to that much. If you had this best, best friend and you guys had this good connection, they moved away to a different country, you could still play on Roblox. I had a friend who a few years back moved to California and since then we've been keeping up through playing video games mostly. So what I did was sort of expanded on that. It has been great to be able to talk and have fun with friends through gaming, despite being locked in our homes. I think games are really great as they can bring people together over common interest and can spark a long-term friendship. Video games are a win-win. They strengthen our connections when we have to isolate and provide a common topic for natural conversation. Gaming also gave me and my friends something to talk about when we eventually met up. Big up mole in H dog. 
It's safe to say that games have meant so much to us all over the last year. They were somewhere we could hang out with the friends we missed. We could challenge ourselves on the days that all seemed the same and explore new worlds when ours were shutting down. Now, during lockdown, I was proud of myself when I just finished playing a game. So I have to admit that having made one is a slightly more impressive achievement. In fact, our jurors were blown away and maybe even a little jealous of the standard of entries we received this year. After all, with brilliant games in every genre, covering topics from climate change to social justice and disability, gender diversity and relationships, there is no doubt that YGD entrants are the next generation of great game designers. And please remember I said that when you are inevitably working on something huge and have codes to give away, okay? So let's hear it from the lucky industry experts who got to play their way through this year's shortlist. The jury process involves a bunch of games industry people uh, getting on a Zoom call. Talking about how the entries approached the brief, uh, from the themes that they chose to talk about to the mechanics of the game. The range of experience from the jury helped bring different perspectives on each entry and reasons why the successful nominees should go on to become finalists. BAFTA send us the entries well in advance so that we have plenty of time to become familiar with them. Some submissions got really creative with the taster video that they could submit alongside their game. They were just so funny and so well written. It was great to get some entries this year that get across what I call is the spark of an idea. What's that little thing that makes us really excited? There was so much thought and consideration that went into each application, just completely blew me away stuff like mechanics and uh, you know kind of game genres that stuff comes later but first and foremost I'm looking for what yeah what someone has to say I think that's really important if you're showing a keen understanding about the really important elements like well thought out and fun core gameplay loops rather than just going with something wild because it sounds cool that will always score highly for me I think the most untangible one is the feeling you get when you first launch it if I open a game I start playing it and I'm like oh wow, this is, this is really cool. Then it tells me that that person is onto something. The standard of entries was just, as always, so incredibly high. There were some really interesting creative ideas with a wide range of subject matter, themes and aims, which made judging them a real joy. It's so incredible to see so many brilliant, brilliant concepts and games being made, uh, covering all kinds of different themes. But it was clear that each each one wanted to tell their own unique story. It feels like I'm getting a sneak peek. I'm getting VIP access uh, to the next generation of game makers. It's easy to lose sight of the magic and the joy that games can bring, especially to younger people. So seeing their enthusiasm brought out in such a creative and practical way is truly special. That's a real sort of life affirming, refreshing, exciting, energy giving thing for someone like me who's been in the games industry for quite a while. Well, as you just heard, it was an incredibly tough but fun job to narrow down this year's fantastic nominees. Speaking of which, it's time to hear more about our finalists and hand out some awards. Now, as any designer will tell you, every great game starts with a great idea. And that's exactly what our first category, Game Concept, is designed to celebrate. These nominees have shown us their talent for storytelling and created worlds we just want to dive into. More importantly though, they've demonstrated how an intriguing idea can be turned into an entire game. It's a seriously underrated skill and needs both creativity and a technical understanding of design. It's how a pizza with a slice missing became Pac-Man or a program teaching physics became Roblox. In fact, the legendary designer Shigeru Miyamoto, who created Mario and Zelda, has built an entire career out of coming up with game concepts, and I have no doubt our finalists will be following in his footsteps. So here are the nominees in the 10 to 14 age group. Game concept 10 to 14. An unnamed game. Magic.
Mind of Cooking. Monsters Under My Bed. Pipeline. Rewind. Save Waffle Burger. Seas of Salvation. Spud in Dewfall Wood. Surveillance sabotaged. And the BAFTA YGD goes to... Rewind by Habibullah Butt. Hello, my name is Habibullah, I'm 13, and my game is called Rewind. Now, Rewind is a game in which the player is thrown into a 3D environment and made to do tasks. After these tasks are done, the player is immersed into the same 3D environment, but tweaked a bit. Now, these tweaks represent the five stages of grief, and hopefully, after playing the game, the player will have a better understanding of what grief is, and more so, what somebody is going through when they have grief. Now, I think the biggest challenge while making this game was representing grief without making it too depressing. Now, the best way I countered this was adding in slightly brighter colours in order to outshine a uh, negative experience. I think the biggest uh, privilege of being a finalist, or if you're seeing this, hopefully a winner, is being able to do all the things that I usually can't do. For example, the master classes and all that other stuff, I think will be really nice. Um, thank you all for listening. Uh, I had a really great time making this video. Thank you and goodbye. Congratulations, Habibla. I'm adding Rewind to my must playlist. So, you know, if you wouldn't mind making it, that would be great. Next up, we have our nominees in the 15 to 18 age group. Game concept, 15 to 18. A splash of colour. Artisan. Big fish, litter fish. Brains and Brawn Light Headed Space Palette The Super Scaffolder Thinking Machines Undergrowth Wish You Were Here And the BAFTA YGD goes to Wish You Were Here by Harry Rimmer. Hi, my name is Harry, I'm 15 years old, and my game is called Wish You Were Here. It's a mystery solving game where you use time travel to jump around to different points in time, you can interview suspects, uh, gather clues, and then uh, by the end you can go to the present and solve the mystery. That time travel part actually was the hardest part for me to do while I was sort of working on the game because uh, on one hand, if you let players have too much control and like time travel to specific times in a day, things get too complicated. But if you give them too little control, they won't use the feature as intended. That sort of treats as a bit of a gimmick. So I had to strike a nice balance. I think I managed to do that with the four season system. 
especially because that ties into the title with the postcards. So, you know, wish you were here. In terms of getting into the finals, though, I'm really excited. Uh, there are all these mentorship opportunities and things, and it should be good for the future because I'm really hoping to work in this industry if I can. And then winning is, uh, yeah, just amazing, really. Um, I'd really like to thank everyone at BAFTA who helped me get to this point and for the opportunities they've given, and yeah, thank you. Congratulations, Harry. Another game I'm desperate to see on shelves. So we've seen how the spark of an idea becomes a fully fledged concept. But how do you turn your concept into a playable game? Well, that's what our next category, game making, is all about. These nominees have learned to code or work with game design engines to bring their ideas to life. And given that most games have whole teams behind them, it's hard to overstate just how impressive it is to design one by yourself. Our next set of finalists took on every role, whether that's building environments, balancing scores, or simply combing through code to figure out exactly why the player randomly explodes 14 seconds in. It's something not many designers can do, and when they can, it's a sure sign of future success. Having worked on every aspect of a game makes you a far better designer. You've got an understanding of design that most people don't have. Of course, you don't have to take my word for it. Smash hit games like Minecraft, Stardew Valley, and even Tetris were all made by just one person. A list I'm sure we'll see added to by our finalists. So here are the nominees in the 10 to 14 age group. Game making. 10 to 14. Cells versus Superbugs. Color Pew Pew. Corruption. Cube Stacker Getting Out of It Hot Dodge Ride Rolling. Runaway trains. Steep ascent. And the BAFTA YGD goes to Getting Out of It by Andrew R. Wen. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew and I created the game Getting Out of It. Getting Out of It is a short exploration game where you use a rope swing and a jetpack to get around. The main inspiration for this game was actually a game jam that I did last year, which had a theme of two. For developing this further, the main challenges that I had was to polish the game and make it feel good. Since previously I never really spent much time and attention into making the game look and feel very good to play. But now that I've won this award, for me it's definitely a high point in my game development journey. However, in the future, I'll, I'll still be participating in YGD. Since for me, in the coming years, I'll be able to participate in the next age category. Anyway, thank you and goodbye. Congratulations, Andrew. I am definitely wishlisting this one. Next, our nominees in the 15 to 18 age group. Game making, 15 to 18. Backyard racing. Deja vu.
Doric on. Earthling Chapter 1 Marsh Spring Man The Little Ninja Thoughtless To be and not to be Welcome Lumen And the BAFTA YGD goes to Thoughtless by Sarah Sazaz. Hello, I'm the creator of Thoughtless, a 2D visual novel in which you explore a 3D environment. I created this game in response to a project for school, in which the prompt was to create a game based off of a poem. The poem in question was about dreams, and I created characters in an environment to reflect this. Each character is based on the main character's personality who is asleep, and then your main goal is to wake them up, or let them sleep. If I had more time, I would have definitely worked on environments and my modelling, because that was a big, um, a bit I was lacking in that department. Um, thank you, I hope you enjoyed the game as much as I did making it. Congratulations, Sara. And I hate to ask, but when are we getting a sequel? Now, our final award this evening is a special one the Young Game Designers Mentor Award. This category celebrates inspirational individuals working with the next generation of game designers. And as someone who sat on this year's jury, I can tell you that narrowing down our incredible nominees was no easy task. After all, a mentor is something that's hard to define. Is it about how many people you've helped or the impact you've had on a single person? Does a mentor need years of experience they can pass on? Or is it about their ability to motivate others instead? Or is it just someone who can teach you how to game the turnip market in Animal Crossing? Whatever your definition, the one thing we all agreed on was that a mentor is someone who can change the trajectory of a life. Someone who opens your eyes to new possibilities and who actively seeks out and champions new talent. And while I'd have been thrilled to have had any of our nominees as a mentor when I was younger, two of them in particular stood out. Richard Harris and Harry Petch, who were presented with their mentor awards last week. So let's learn a little bit more about this year's winners. The YGD Mentor Award is given to an inspirational individual involved in helping game makers in the UK. We look for people who help young people to learn programming and game design and are definitely interested in mentors who help kids who wouldn't normally have the opportunity. This is the way we can bring in more diverse voices to the games industry and that's definitely to all our benefits. Last year we weren't able to give away a YGD Mentor Award and that meant that this year when we saw how strong the list of candidates were, they deserve to have two awards. There were so many people who had just devoted their time, their energy, their efforts into helping kids to have fun making games. Mentors like Richard and Harry are so important to young people and the games industry because they're not only encouraging practical skills, but they're also inspiring confidence and collaboration and just so many other values that are really important for success, not just in a career, but also in life. Harry and Richard certainly are inspirational and provide those kind of community and support structures for really inspiring people and getting them to fully realise their dreams of making video games. The reaction we got from introducing game design 
into the curriculum was so amazing. A larger uptake on GCSE classes, and I think the general change of students being more aware of the jobs available gave them aspirations, and I think that is massive. I've nominated Mr. Harris because he doesn't stop when we've pushed ourselves, he wants to push us further up, and he, no he doesn't give up on one of us, uh, he's always encouraging us to do more. Richard is very clearly dedicated not just to his students but also to other educators and parents whose support is really essential for young people who are interested in this path. The reason why Harry is receiving this award is because you can just truly tell he cares about helping other people make games. While at school he started two game development clubs. From these clubs there have been a whopping eight nominations under the two categories of the YGD Awards in 2019 and 2020. I enjoy mentoring people who are also interested in game development and are in a similar position to me before I entered YGD, passionate about game development, but not really sure how to best focus that passion. I think Harry deserves this award because he's always been extremely inspirational and positive. Harry's work has helped me to learn Python to a higher level, and now I really enjoy programming as a hobby. A lot of students are shy and it's just been really good to give shy people an outlet to express themselves without feeling embarrassed. The impact I hope my mentoring will provide is that they consider game development as a valid career option and that they realise that they are actually really good at it. Harry, above all else, is my friend. He pushed me to create my game and introduced me to the BAFTA competition. Harry pushes himself to help everyone as much as he can and I wouldn't have made my game without him. Massive well done Harry, I'm so proud of everything that you've achieved over the last few years. Well done Harry, you deserved this award. To Harry and Richard, uh, I just wanted to say that you both are incredible people. For me Richard it's really a congratulations, thoroughly deserved, um, onwards and upwards for you I'm sure. I am so glad that he's won this. I couldn't think of anyone more inspiring, deserving. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations, sir. Really glad of you. Richard and Harry, thank you so much for everything that you have done and are doing and will continue to do. Uh, you're both just incredible humans, so thank you. Everything that Richard and Harry have done in encouraging and supporting the next generation of game creatives has been so inspiring. I only wish that they'd both been around when I was at school. Congratulations Richard and Harry. Thank you so much for all your efforts and for all the people that you've helped to have fun making games. Congratulations again Richard and Harry. You're an inspiration to not just the young people you work with, but to our industry as a whole. A real reminder to send the ladder back down behind you and be generous with your time, experience and resources, no matter what stage of your career you're at. Which, suspiciously perfectly, leads into our next video, featuring some very special industry guests who wanted to send their congratulations to all of this year's YGD winners and nominees. Greetings young Earthling Game Makers! We are astounded and excited by your talented ability to create entire worlds from nothing. But first, a message from our species to yours. <clears throat> oh, hey, this is Carla Tassara. You might know me better as Judy Alvarez from Cyberpunk 2077. And on behalf of all us actors, congratulations! You are so amazing, so talented and inspiring. Congratulations to all the BAFTA, YGD nominees and winners. You're all amazing. You are all phenomenal. This is such an achievement and you should be so proud of yourselves. Yeah, and we can't wait to see and play what you lot make in the future. Hey guys, Laura Bailey here, though you may know me as the voice of Black Widow in Avengers. I just wanted to say congratulations to all of you today. I cannot wait to see what you do next. Congratulations to all of you. I look forward to begging you all for work in about 10 years time, possibly less. Well done, congratulations. It has been a really difficult year to be a game developer and a really difficult year to be a teenager and you guys are officially both, so well done for not just making it through 2020, you also made a game. That's so inspiring and I have such respect and awe for every single one of you. 
Hi, I'm Marcus Bronzy, and I just want to say congratulations to all of the winners. And also, if you've just been nominated for a YGV award, well done. If this is what you're doing right now, oh my goodness, the games you're going to be making in like 10 years time are going to be incredible. Hello, young game designers, nominees and winners. I just wanted to say how massively impressed I am with each and every one of you, not only for creating amazing games of the future, but also for putting yourselves out there. Hi! Hello! Hey. Congratulations to all the YGD nominees and winners. Best of luck for everything that you go on to do in the future. Keep being creative. And keep designing games. Young and talented. Seems a bit unfair to me. Hi everyone, I'm Alana Pierce and I just wanted to say a huge congratulations to all the YGD winners and nominees this year. We are so excited to have you in the games industry. Please keep blessing the world with all of your creativity. Congratulations to the winners and to the runners up. This is not the end. Keep going. I cannot wait to see what you will be up to next. And I hope, I hope, I hope that you continue down this path and be encouraged by each other and inspired by each other because you guys are unstoppable. Well, what a lovely way to see out tonight's ceremony. I hope that video proved just how much the games industry backs young game designers. And while, yes, we're slightly worried you're going to steal our jobs, we're mostly just excited to see such a brilliant bunch of talent arrive in the industry, full of new ideas and cutting edge skills. So again, a huge congratulations to all of our incredible nominees and, of course, to our winners who were able to set themselves apart in a very competitive shortlist. But before we go, I also want to take a moment to congratulate every single person who entered the Young Game Designers Awards this year. I know exactly what it's like to work your hardest on an entry, send it off with your fingers crossed, and then how disappointing it can feel when you tune in and don't hear your name. But as every game developer has to learn, the hardest part of any project is just getting it finished. I mean, look, I'm still waiting for Overwatch 2. And yet, in an enormously difficult year, you finished what for many of you will be your very first game or design concept. That means you've kicked off your development journey and can now officially call yourself a game designer. Plus, if the level of talent we saw this year is anything to go by, you've all got long, successful careers ahead of you. And of course, BAFTA will be alongside you every step of the way, with masterclasses, panels, scholarships, and talent schemes to support you at every stage of your career. After all, when you turn out to be the next Amy Hennig or Hideo Kojima, we want to be able to take credit. So make sure to stay in touch over on the BAFTA Games Twitter, at BAFTA Games, or visit the BAFTA YGD website, ygd.bafta.org, where you can find out more information and sign up to our mailing list for a reminder to enter again next year. I can't wait to see what you come up with. And finally, a huge thank you to everyone who makes young game designers possible. Parents who became playtesters, teachers who stayed after hours to help students enter, our industry experts, talent spotting on the YGD juries, and our wonderful partners. But for now, I'm Ella Silly Wood, and it has been an absolute honor to celebrate with you all this evening. Hopefully, I'll see you back here again next year. Goodbye.